Well, welcome to another Franklin Blend Challenge. Uh, this is episode three, and yes, we're on Saturday night rather than Thursday night, and that's because of July 4th, and we hope you guys had a fantastic July 4th. Okay, like we said in the intro, this is a Saturday night show, and I think we're going to keep it Saturday night. Uh, we just want getting the viewers we hope for on Thursday night and maybe moving it for Saturday. We'll get uh, the views that we hope to for the show. This is episode three uh, in our challenge where we take a uh, group of bourbons and whiskeys and try to augment them, make them into something else a franken blend so uh tonight we have uh, a recipe from a subscriber and one of my recipes and don't forget there's a reason that you want to submit a recipe on this show because see these bottles here they are our first and second place bottles for the franken blend so if you submit a recipe like jim rochelle rochelle has sent this is his recipe, and we'll talk about that in a second. But if you submit a recipe and we accept it, it's going to go into our Elite Eight series on Show 5, where we're quickly going to go from 8 to 1. And that champion could be you, could be your recipe. If you come in second, you still win a bottle. So first and second place, first place gets to choose the, uh, the Eagle Rare or the McKenna, Second place, we'll get the other bottle. Now, I might be first or second. You might be first or second. But I'm guaranteeing that you're going to, somebody, that a subscriber is going to win first or second place. So, a bottle is guaranteed. All you have to do is get your recipe accepted by our group, me and the wife, basically, for the Franken Blend. So, Without further ado, let's talk about our subscriber's recipe, Jim Rochelle. Jim is, uh, I think I first noticed Jim on the last Franken Blend. I, I believe, if I'm not correct, and Jim, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that you had an entry in uh, in our last Franken Blend last year, 2023. So Jim's recipe, and I'm calling his recipe the Rare Rebel Pie. <laughs> don't ask me why. I don't know why I come up with these things. But his is a three blender. And remember, uh, the rules for the recipe is two to three whiskeys or bourbon in equal amounts. They just have to be bourbons or whiskeys I have. So Jim recommended the uh, Rare Breed. And he re recommended a mellow corn, which we didn't have, so we substituted this Casey Jones, which is a corn and cane whiskey, it's not a bourbon, and a Rebel cast strength, which the cast strength we had is this uh, Rebel Distillers Collection. It is a single barrel store pick, and uh, it's 113 proof. The Casey Jones is 104. Can't keep from hitting the bottles, can I? And of course, I don't even have to look. Rare Breed is always 116.8. I know it was point something. Always 116 proof. All right, well, let's get our beakers out so we can measure up some whiskey. All right, so we're just going to make it easy. We'll do three ounces, one ounce of each. I think that'll give us enough left over for our uh, little bottles that we're bottling there. Find that one ounce mark. So, get an ounce and quarter here. Of that. a fair amount there that should be enough to get a good sampling and you know the way we do it 
we score each of these recipes uh, uh, we just by scoring that I do on the Give Me Five of uh, one to five stars, and that's going to give it a ranking in the uh, Elite Eight. And the eight is a uh, this is not the one we're going to use, but it is a single uh, team elimination where they're bracketed, uh, or should I say, they're seeded. So um, the best recipes will tend to go go against each other in the end, and you, the poor recipes get eliminated early. Just the way a seeded bracket works. Give it a nice little pour. Not too much. I want to say plenty for hopefully that bracket, right? So, Jim Rochelle, Rare Breed, Rebel Cast Strength, and the uh, A corn whiskey, which we're using our Casey Jones, which is a corn and cane. I actually like the Casey Jones. It's just not a bourbon. I mean, it's kind of a sweet whiskey. Let's see what it smells like. <laughs> Dang! I get that rare breed and, a, and cane sugar. I'm not smelling the Rebel at all right now. That rare breed comes through and then the sweetness from the Casey Jones, I really picked that up. The wheat is in there somewhere, but I just can't pick it up past the rear breed. It smells delicious. I mean, I got, the, I mean, sweet oak, molasses, brown sugar, and then that cane syrup smell, which is, you know, when I say molasses, traditional bourbon notes coming from the rare breed and uh, especially a lot of oak but then that very sweet cane syrup you know and uh, kind of like you put on um, pancakes when I was small living in Florida we'd use cane syrup on pancakes because cane syrup was so cheap you could buy it in the grocery store cheaper than you could molasses or any of these uh, other syrups made out of uh, corn or whatever cane syrup was cheap and it's delicious too if you ever had it. Cheers. Well, the spices of the rare breed certainly came through and rich, but the sweetness that uh, this really uh, balanced us out because I thought this was maybe on too much on the sweet side when I uh, originally tried it. The Rebel isn't sweet at all, it's a good. Weeded bourbons, not my favorite, but I'm thinking between the two of these, that really jacked up the proof, but really none of these is, even this at 104, none of them is a low proof. So uh, I'll put on the screen what the de de derived proof is. Typically, I figure that out ahead of time. I, I forgot to do it, but we'll put that on the screen what the derived proof is, but it's definitely in my wheelhouse and... I do taste the proof, but I got no ethanol. I got no burn on the back of the throat. This is really good, and this is a top contender. I can tell you, uh, we've done what have we? Uh, we've had uh, four recipes so far. Uh, Jim's is recipe five, and it's up there. Uh, it could be hard to beat. It is really good. Wow. I am going to. I think this is going to be. Yep, this is going to be the highest scoring so far. Uh, I'm giving this four and a half stars, which is the leading. I've got uh, two three and a halves and two fours so far, and now I have a four and a half. Congratulations, Jim. That is a killer blend, a killer Franken blend. Wow. We're going to cleanse my palate and set up for the next one. And the next one is mine. And you know what I'm calling this? Orange Maple Cream. Oh, yeah. And my recipe, which I said uh, is Orange Maple Cream. I don't know where I came up with that. But you might kind of get an idea. Orange. Penelope Valencia. Well, this one is the king of maple 
finished bourbons in my view widow jane decadence now this is the 2022 this is the one i've had open for a while i've got a 2023 i just opened a little while back i was doing a comparison widow jane decadence is what turned me on to finish bourbons good finished bourbons and to me it's still as good as the day i discovered it we'll start off with the widow jane And if you're replicating the stuff at home, it really doesn't matter how many ounces you use, it's the proportions. So the Widow Jane 10 year to me is overpriced. The decadence, it's always been overpriced. Well, I say that when I first got into decadence, I, I could get it for 80 bucks. And uh, it's every bit an $80 bourbon, but now, I generally see it around for one and a quarter. If I see it for 115 or below, and I'm down to two bottles, <laughs> yeah, I'm buying a third. Yeah, I'm not going to have as much in this one as I had in the last one. I really made a lot of that first, <laughs> made of that Jim's batch. So I really think I maybe on the next ones I go two ounces then. Maybe I need four ounces, period, of anything, so I have enough left over. But if I have to remake it, I'll do it. So, um, the Widow Jane is, this is going to be a low proof. Uh, this is going to be a lot lower than the first one. Maybe I should have done that one first. This is only, uh, Widow Jane decadence has never been a high proof. It's 91. And... Uh, you know, I've never had any cast strength Widow Jane. I'm not even sure if they have it. I know they've got the, uh, what, Lucky 13, and there's a, there's a 14 and maybe a 15. I've never had any of those. They're always excessively priced. And this is, what, 95? So really, I mean, it doesn't even make it to 100 proof. This is going to be, uh, this is going to definitely be a uh, easy sipper. You know, I was hoping for maple and orange, and I got it. Maple and orange. You combine them together, you got this in a glass. Cheers. That is something special. That has got a load of flavor. Wow. Um... Not quite as sweet as the previous one, believe it or not. This has definitely got the fruit and the, the maple goodness going on. Kind of like you would... Uh, it kind of reminds me, if you had a really intense bourbon and then you put it in, well, there, I don't know, some kind of <laughs> previous orange liqueur barrels, Mm. Well, let's take one more sip, and we're going to give this one a score. That's good. That is really good. But you know what? The winner tonight is Jim's. That is flat out amazing. This is flat out good. I'm going to give my orange maple cream four stars. It's good. I actually was hoping the uh, Penelope was a little sweeter. I'm missing a little bit of sweetness. The Widow Jane has never been a sweet. It was a traditional bourbon with a hint of maple to it. That's what, to me, makes it so great. It's not a sweet bourbon, not at all. I remember the Valencia being sweeter, but now it's being diluted by the Widow Jane, so it loses its sweetness. I kept the orange in there, but it's losing its sweetness. As a result, I'm a little disappointed that it wasn't sweeter. I think if it was a hair sweeter, it would have been a four and a half stars. Jim's is definitely in the final four. I think my cigar batch will make it to the final four, but we'll see. So we need, and I haven't talked about this before, I need three more recipes. 
because I just don't want to, I want to have the best recipes going in because the better your recipe, the more chance that you will win and beat me and more chance that you could place first or second for one of these bottles over here. We have a guaranteed bottle winner, but you guys could actually have two subscriber winners, first and second place. We hope you will like this video, comment, and share, and please get those recipes in for our next show, our Franken Blend episode four in two weeks. And as always, never drink and drive. Please drink responsibly, and we'll see you on the next Franken Blend.